Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, welcome back my dear friends, uh, very good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening to all of you wherever you are in this part of the globe. And as you know this is the 30th lecture which is the last lecture in this uh, in the course investment analysis and portfolio management under the Swayam lecture series. And my good name is Raghunandan Sengupta from the IME department at IIT Kanpur in India. So, if you remember in the 29th uh, lecture we were basically discussing uh, and in 28th and the 29th because the 28th spilled over and, and we completed in 29th one. The whole discussion was uh, main focus was about the winner process, uh, the concept of what we mean by the trend and the volatility, then the generalized winner process, the general concepts of uh, Brownian motion. Uh, Markov process and what was the concept of the Ito process and the Ito lemma and how we utilize the concept of uh, the stochastic differential equation uh, and the Taylor series expansion considering that the two important parameters which affected the stock prices was basically the initial stock price S naught which was basically denoted by X as the variable in the general discussion and the time time was basically capital T and, and then uh, considering all the assumptions how you can uh, ignore higher terms considering that any second derivative for with respect to time delta T or first derivative of delta T was ignored such that we could arrive at the, uh, the Black Scholes model. And in the Black Scholes model the main um, um, important focus was to basically find out the forward price or the price of the European call. And why I mentioned the European call if you remember I did go twice once very slowly discussing in the general concept that what were the different assumptions. And then given we need to find out F we saw that the risk free interest rate was, was one of the um, parameters which was affecting the price then was the volatility, then the stock price and all these things were there. And the other assumptions related to no brokerage costs or the taxes, European um, option being there, then the concept of um, demand and supply being such that information was available to all, all were, were discussed. Now, in the discussion also in the 20th and the 29th one we uh, did mention time and again that the, what was the distribution, how the concepts of the continuous compounding uh, concept with respect to the log normal prices of the stocks and how actually the variance was dependent on time. And if you took very st the infinite difference of times so you could basically add up the variances not the standard deviation. And uh, we got uh, which I just mentioned few minutes back the Black Scholes model. And the Black Scholes model was basically related to finding the price of the options and underlying the spot was basically denoted by S. Now, in this uh, whole series, I am taking, I am taking, I am before I start off this 30th lecture, I would like to, uh, it is not a recap, I am just uh, given the main bullet points related to what the lecture of today would be. We did discuss uh, about in, in pretty much details about uh, the concept of uh, the risk, the standard deviation variance, the concept of beta, the sharp ratio, Jensen's index and all these things. There are different measures of how you want to basically find out what is the loss you are facing. And I was using and, and I would be using also in the next series of lectures about risk analysis, the word volatility, risk and loss interchangeably. Now, uh, as the main focus of the next course would be risk, 
So, I will try to basically go into some of the very simple concept of risk in this 30th lecture. Obviously, there would be a whole lot of discussions about the concept which I am discussing here that would be based on, on the idea that how the different type of credit ratings are done um, and how the different type of, of ratings of bonds and rating of financial instruments they would be considered and, and how we can use the different measures of risk and what are the properties of risk. Why the different measures of risk would be coming up later is that if you remember uh, during the Markowitz model discussion and all these things, it was time and again mentioned that uh, normality or asymmetric uh, distributions was the main focus of the Markowitz model such that you can consider variance and standard deviation as the best measure of risk because it gives you a good idea. And how when you consider the extreme value distributions, um, this concept of, of diversification and trying to understand that what is the effect of diversification uh, does not hold true for the cases of the standard deviation and the vari and variance. And later on, uh, we will also see that how um, the value at risk does not hold if you consider um, non normal distribution, but other forms of risk like conditional value at risk, EVAR, expected regret, all this hold. So, today's discussion would not be all about all these things, but about the different type of Greeks which we use in trying to find out the concept of risk uh, for the general portfolio and portfolio now I it has the definition has expanded in the sense we would have different forms of financial instruments in the portfolio. So, this is uh, the investment analysis and portfolio management lectures 30 number 30. We will basically consider different exposures, exposures by the word exposure I mean the different type of risk an investor is facing and uh, these would be coming up. Um, again later on. We will consider um, very briefly and uh, I am not going to go into the problem solving as of now, because the problem solving mainly for the risk, mainly for trying to basically find out how the price fluctuations would be considered, how the value at risk would be calculated, how the conditional value at risk would be calculated, all these things would be coming up later, but let us basically build up the, the background such that the level of, of enthusiasm continues when we uh, go into the next course. So, we will consider the concept of delta, these are all the Greeks which are there, the gamma, vega, theta and rho and they would be considered the portfolio risk or the rate of change of the portfolio risk depending on change of different type of variables which are the important factors which uh, change the portfolio value as such, value means the total net worth what we consider. Now, uh, what we mean by delta, so and we will be using the symbols uh, as mentioned in, in the, the concept of the, of the Greek. So, I will use the different color, and so, okay. so the delta concept is basically when we try to find out the partial derivative or rate of change of the portfolio price with respect to the spot price considering all the other variables are concerned. Now, obviously, you know other variables which can be affecting the price of the portfolio can be say for example, the time, the, the, the different type of uh, variances, variances or volatility which may be there in the market and all these things. So, when we consider the partial derivative, so what we, we actually mean is which is definitely obvious to all of you who have uh, definitely a good knowledge in, in uh, calculus. So, we are considering the price change of the portfolio P 2 by P 1, oh, sorry it is P 1 divided by S 2 minus S 1 and this S is basically S 1, S 2 because in the portfolio you will have different some uh, financial instruments. So, the, the spot would be considering with respect to the different financial instruments which we have. So, let us consider a portfolio. Now, portfolio the concept of portfolio has been expanded. Why I am saying expanded and what I why I mentioned few minutes back was that 
this portfolio does not only consider the, the simple stock, it consists of the forward options and all this combination. So, you have a, a spot value and uh, I am just highlighting the values based on which the calculation will be done. You have the spot goal value which is given as uh, the value being 1 lakh and 80 thousand dollars or whatever unit you, you are based on which you are measuring. You have a forward contract. So, we do remember why we discussed about the forwards and the futures. So, we have a forward contract with the net value of minus 90,000 depending on the price fluctuation in which direction it is going. We have a set of for, um, future contracts with the value of 2000. I am again ignoring the units. We have a swap uh, of quantum of, of 80,000. We have an option of the quantum of val value of 110000 and we have an exotic, exotic is different type of other uh, type of options which are there which is the value of 25000 and the total net value of the portfolio is given as 1 and 117, 1 lakh and 70000. So, this is a snapshot which you are taking. Now, here how the calculations of the delta is done. If price of gold changes, so that was at time t is equal to 0 or whatever time we considered. If the price of gold changes from 500 per ounce or per unit of weight to 500.10 per ounce and suppose the new value of the portfolio depending on the price fluctuation whatever is there, obviously the, they would be changing the price fluctuation others also. The total value comes out to be now the value is 116,900. So, you have basically 1,16,900 as P2 and the P1 value which was given, let us go back, it was given as 1,17,000. So, P1 was given as 1,17,000. So, the sensitivity or the delta, so basically when we are talking about rate of change is basically the, the sensitivity that per unit change in the underlying variable and what is the rate of change or the change of the portfolio value because depending on that you can find out how sensitive your portfolio value is with one unit change in the corresponding other uh, price fluctuations whatever it is. So, the sensitivity of the delta of the portfolio is given by 100 divided by the value which is the difference in 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 uh, the gold price and the value comes out to be minus 1000. So, the reason being that the price fluctuation in final price price fluctuation was 500.1, initial value was 500. So, the difference is 0 0.1 which is positive and if I consider the overall value of the change of the portfolio, it is 116900 that means 116900 minus 117000 so the total value comes out to be negative of 1000 so if i use the word of that i want to make my portfolio delta neutral delta neutral would be mean that any price fluctuation based on the spot the value or the sensitivity of that portfolio can be managed that means, because we do not want to face any level of risk. So, in order to make it delta neutral, this is, so I want to make it delta neutral. We buy 1000 ounce of, of gold because the prices if you if you consider because 1000 into 0 0.1 would be the, the case, 1000 ounce of gold. So, that when this trade is combined with the existing portfolio, the resultant portfolio would be delta neutral or uh, with respect to the change of the spot, uh, we are able to take out, take care of the risk. The main problem, obviously, they they can be different type of. So this uh, this uh, hypothetical example was based on the concept of you have gold and the corresponding. That's the basic asset, the, and and based on that you have different type of options forwards and so on and so forth. Now, it can be for different type of, of um, product or commodity also and financial instruments also. 
So, the, the financial instruments, why I am saying that, say for example, you have different type of stocks, it can be Tata Motors, it can be, say for example, State Bank of India, it can be uh, the, the gold which you have, it can be aluminum, it can be some, say for example, wood or log, uh, whatever it is, com combination. It can, they can be different type of derivative based on the interest rates also, rainfall also, so all these things can be done. So, the main problem is that the value of the product or the portfolio is not linearly dependent. So, when I am considering the rate of change of the portfolio with respect to the rate of change of the prices, they are not linear, it can be any functional form. So, the reason being that I am only taking the values at those particular points at t is equal to 1, t is equal to 2, t is equal to 3 and so on and so forth. So, if I had that functional form of the portfolio value. So, and, and consider then when you are considering uh, say for example, the simple Markovich model and there, there are no other options, no other derivatives, no forward futures, then we know that the mean value of the portfolio is given by the formula of summation of uh, W1, W1 is the weights multiplied by R i bar, uh, um, suffix i bar which is basically the, the sample mean of the rate of return. And this rate, rate of return is exactly what you have been, have been talking about the trend and all these things based on, on the rate of return which you find out. So, as it is not linear, so it will depend on the value of the market variable that is we do not have the, we would not have the graph. So, basically they would be on only analytical uh, values or mathematical values based on which we will do, do the calculations. So, we do not have the graph as shown below. This is just a theoretical one which I, have, which I have drawn. In case we have the relationship as linear, the delta is the constant concept and we calculate it from the graph as the slope. So, if I have this is S on the x axis, which is already marked, this is value of P portfolio and I have say for example, the, the price at S1 as time t is equal to 1 and say for example, I want to find out of a small infinite change of time. So, I will basically find out the value of theta and obviously the height with respect to the base which is tan theta will give me the value of the delta which is required for us. Now, it may be possible the graph is not linear which was very clearly stated in the beginning of the slide which is in front of you. So, if I have the graph of the change of, of the prices based on the spot is like this. So, what I would do is that for the cases say for example, here. Uh, and, and we will basically find out at this point, we will find out the rate of change dy dx and the dy dx would basically give us the value of the delta and delta would keep changing because if as I change take uh, uh, the, the move the, the tangent dy dx at each every point it will keep changing. So, if, if my total I am just uh, drawing it say for example, for here. So, consider the graph is like this, at this, uh, this uh, zoomed in uh, case which we have. So, the slope which is there it will keep changing. So, the slope goes like this. So, again next value you have the slope here, initially it was here, then as you move up the now the slope is here. So, you will have basically then again the slope is basically here which means in case 1 you had basically theta 1, in case 2 basically you will have theta 2, uh, the, uh, if it was zoomed in you could see what I am drawing in the sense uh, in the slide, then, then in the case 3, case 3 means as, as you are moving, <coughs> you have theta 3, then in basically the case 4 at this point you had basically theta 4. So, at point A, at point B, 
these a b c's are just the points uh, where we want to find out the rate of change and this has point d the values of d y d x tan theta would give you the sensitivity of the uh, delta value. So, and obviously, it will come out immediately very obvious that in the, in the discussion on the last problem in the last slide 6, we said that what is the quantum of such value which I have to purchase in order to make it delta neutral, which means that instantaneously buying and selling of the corresponding quantum should be kept in mind such that at each and every instance you will basically keep changing the so called common combination in the portfolio to make it delta neutral. Continuing the discussion from the delta, a linear product can be hedged quite easily because if we know uh, the rate of change which is constant, so I know what is the total cons and the delta value based on the I will take the decision that how we want to hedge the risk and make it delta neutral. Examples of linear products are basically the forwards, the futures and the swaps, while options are not linear products. So, if I basically highlight the values which are linear based on which you can find out dy dx linear would be this one, forwards would be there, futures would be there, swaps would be there, while for the case of options it is not. And the one which I have highlighted in green forward features and swaps you remember first for the forward and features the, 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 the graph based on which the payoff was found out was a straight line. So, hence it is linear and also in the swap con um, in, in, in the discussion of the swaps I did mention that the notional value was kept fixed, the interest was also kept fixed between when, when the swap is taking place between two parties and, and the third party F i is coming into the transaction in order to minimize the overall risk both the parties are facing. So, trying to find out the delta for this type of, of uh, financial products would be easy while for options you know that as they keep changing uh, depending on, on type of options which you have the delta value would, would be. Uh, not constant with respect to um, the rate of change of the price based on which we are trying to find out the delta. For example, consider the US bank enters into a forward position with this client in, Euro in Europe and agrees to sell to the client 1 million euros. Also assume the interest rate is 4 percent with annual compounding. This implies that the present value of that amount would be, I want to find out the present value would be, because here it is not continuous compounding interest rate, remember. So, for the case of the swaps we have considered time and again and I, and I remember I did mention few times when we were discussing our swaps that continuous compounding interest rate concept would not be considered. So, this would mean that the present value of that amount based on which um, the, the, dis, the financial transaction would take place between the US bank which is the city bank and European corporation which is Arriva. So, with the value comes out to be 9,61,538. Now, what the bank can do? Bank means the US bank. The bank can hedge its risk by borrowing enough dollars to buy this amount which is 961538 euros today and investing this euros for one year at 4 percent. So, event even in the case if interest rate is floating you can convert it through a swap to a fixed interest rate we have seen that. Um, so, you have um, the swap which would basically take care for the asset and the liability case also, both of them and I, I did go through one of the problem in detail. So, all the other cons, all the problems would be on similar basis. Only try to check in which direction the graphs, uh, the um, lines are either coming inside the organization A or going or going out from the organization A or B whatever it is. So, I am talking about this from the swaps perspective. So, even if the interest rate is floating, you can convert that, we have seen it, we can convert a floating to a fixed, fixed to a floating both for the asset and the liability cases. So, we can convert it to a swap to a fixed rate and we would definitely have a linear product. 
options and such products are not linear already mentioned. So, let us consider an example where a trader sells some n number of European call option and a non dividend paying stock which means coupon say for example, the coupons of or instantaneous payback coming out from the in the from that investment is not there. So, consider sells some n number of European call options and a non dividend paying stock with the following informations which are the strike price k, the spot at time t is equal to 0, the risk free interest rate r f and this delta suffix delta s is the volatility of the stock price change. So, if you remember when we are discussing about the Black Scholes model and also I did not mean go into that depth that what depth means in the sense I did not make a, a, a recall of the fact that what is standard deviation sigma, but I do remember quite vividly that when we are discussing in one of the last three, five, six lectures I did mention that the value of r which is the rate that the return or the, the, uh, the rate of return would be basically utilize that will utilize that value to find out the mean value and the variance of the standard deviation would be calculated based on that. We are only trying to find out at the sigma value based on the, the, the prices here it is basically based on the, uh, the change in the spot and t is the time. Now, in case of a non-linear one what you do for the delta. So, here for the non-linear one we are considering and options, the options pricings are there. So, let me highlight the x axis and y axis. So, you, this is the asset price along the x direction and you have the op option uh, values given in the y direction. So, if I draw the asset, um, the option price and the asset price, it will come out to be a non-linear one which, which I just drew and showed it here, this one the price fluctuation of the whole portfolio happening. So, this is non-linear. So, what we need to do is that again find out the rate. So, these values are theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 and you can find out the rate of change for that but they are fluctuating. So, delta values fluctuating. The graph can also look like this. Once you when when you are drawing now mark the y axis it is no longer the spot is basically the delta value because I need to find out the rate of change of that function and based on that I need to find out the delta y because the delta will give me the value based on which I can make it delta neutral. So, is buying and selling the corresponding value uh, as we saw that in the case where the, uh, the asset was the commodity which was the gold. So, based on that you can find it out. So, if I need to find out for an asset price say for example, let me mark it as A1, this I will mark it as A2, this I will mark it as A3. So, these are the asset prices we are denoting. So, the delta value at time t 1, t 2 and t 3 would be given. Uh, you can find it from the graph you can be given and based on that you have to make instantaneous decision of trying to buy and sell. Now, we come to the next um, Greek which is the gamma. Now, the Greek or the gamma of, which is gamma of a portfolio is now the rate of change of delta with respect to the price which is the second derivative which I am talking about. So, till now we have d del y del x or d y d x. Now, we are trying to find out d 2 y d x 2. <coughs> so, this is the rate of change of delta with respect to the price of the underlying asset. So, that is the second derivative which you have. Now, if you remember for for uh, to make our life simple in the calculations or in the discussion, if the change of the delta 
So, the, the value of the, of the delta is small or the delta is very small and the change of the delta is also very small. So, why I am saying small in the sense whatever the value of delta which you have along the y axis this would basically give you dy dx and then you need to find out d 2 y dx too. So, if the value of say for example, delta is very small then finding out the second derivative would give, give you very small values. So, if gamma is small which is the second derivative then the delta changes very slowly and adjustments to keep a portfolio delta neutral only need to be made relatively infrequently because if it is changing very fast you have to do the computation calculation immediately and basically find out the delta values based on that you buy and sell the corresponding financial instrument or the commodities in order to make the it is delta neutral. For, for a straight line once fixed it, came, it remains fixed. So, so then delta is, is very highly sensitive to the value of in case if it is very if, if in case gamma um, is large in, in the absolute sense that means the second derivative is large which means the delta is very sensitive it has a huge any delta change value delta means now I am not using the delta in the concept of the Greek delta change value is that the small change in the spot if it has a huge change in the in the delta then obviously gamma um, the value of the gamma cannot be ignored. So, for these cases we should try to adjust the portfolio so that it has the characteristics of a delta neutral. So, if it is delta neutral so then corresponding the values of, of gamma um, can also be maintained or kept under control. So, this is which I have already do, um, done I have explained that, but still what we are mentioning is this y axis again only change is happening what you are measuring along the y axis. In the last graph which was basically the 15th one we considered that it was only the delta value. This delta value means this one in, in this last graph. Now, again we consider the option prices along the y axis and we consider the asset prices on the x axis. So, this is basically the value which we will have. So, we have the midpoint d oh sorry sorry d y d x would give you uh, at that point say for example, a would give you the corresponding values of whatever is required to be found out. So, we consider first the delta and then, then the gamma. Linear products obviously would have 0 gamma y this is answer is very simple. So, if d y d x is a constant then trying to find out the rate of change of that function which is d y d x would basically be 0. But suppose a delta neutral portfolio has a gamma equal to the gamma value which is given and the traded option has a value of gamma as gamma naught or gamma 0. If then if the number of the traded options added to the portfolio if it is given by w naught then the value of the gamma of the portfolio would be given by. So, here you have the values at time t is equal to 0 and then you add up the value of gamma which you have in order to find out the gamma of the whole portfolio as such. So, how the values are, are, are given based on this which can do the calculations for the, the second derivative or rate of change. Now, continuing the dis discussion your question now is what happens if we have two different trader options. So, now till now we have only one considered one if there are two different traded options then how do we find out the gamma of the combined portfolio. So, do the question is that do we use a linear combinations based on the fact that we add up the overall value based on, on, on diff two different options which are there. So, if there are two different options only for our problem we will consider the first term and the second term the higher, higher terms would not be considered. <clears throat> so, if you have two different trading strat strategies then how do we find out the gamma of the combined portfolio which basically is it possible? So, it is answer is no because they are non-linear in nature. The answer is no as we do not know 
whether the options are independent of each other. So, the options being independent what I mean that for option 1 and option 2 any change in the risk value any change in the value of one option does not have any effect on the change of the other option that means we are considering correlation to be 0. So, the answer is no as we do not know whether the options are independent of each other and moreover if they are in independent we do not know whether the correlation coefficient between the options is linear or not because one is the underlying asset and an another is derivative based on the underlying asset. So, the correlation coefficient which is existing for the actual um, financial product or the commodity and also which you need to find out in the derivative based on this, this one, they can be two different ways which means that if I have a spot of S, S 1. So, this one is not the time, it is basically the spot of one product. Okay, let me consider uh, this one, this value of 1 which I have written in a suffix. Uh, let me denote it, it by some other uh, nomenclature. So, this is S 1 F time right writing meaning it is basically the first option and, and the, the, the price of the underlying asset for the first option and the second option. So, the correlation coefficient if it is 0 here, there is no guarantee that the derivative of the options formed from S 1 and that formed from S 2 whether they would basically have the correlation as 0 that is not guaranteed. Now, if you draw the, the graph of the gamma. So, you have gamma along measuring along the y axis and asset price along the x axis, the typical form of the gamma would be like this. It looks like an uh, this normal distribution, but it will be skewed either to the left or the right depending on what type of returns you are taking. The word return I am not using only in the sense for the spot of the, um, the stock or the financial instrument can be based on the the values or the options which you have. And uh, in this case, one thing should be remembered when I mentioned the returns, generally we will see that in the next course, but I am just mentioning it here. So, if, if I basically draw the negative returns and the positive returns, what I mean by the negative returns and the positive returns is like this. So, you if you basically have a column of all the returns for in say for example, any particular stock for day 1, day 2, day 3 or, or any infinite time at which we are measuring. Now, when we consider this and then break that up into two sets, one is the positive returns that means, the prices are increasing and one is the neg negative return. So, let me use different color, you have a positive return and you have a negative return. So, if I plot only the positive one and if I plot only the negative one, there you will get either the left skewed or the right skewed depending on, on the general data which you have and it can be shown that actually they come out to be like this positive would have one, one side uh, of the normal distribution and the negative one be corresponding there. And, and you can basically utilize that in trying to find out uh, the, the value of the portfolio both for positive and, and negative returns which you consider. So, if I have the gamma you can find out as at different prices at different prices of the assets you can find out the gammas which are given. So, this is point A, point B, point C. So, this is not drawn properly point D, so point E and all these things. So, you can find out the gamma corresponding to the change in the asset price and obviously, if it is not linear then you have to do uh, instantaneous calculation based on which you can find out the gamma. 
Now, as I just mentioned, left skewed and right skewed would have different graphs. So, in one case, another case is, is right skewed and left skewed. I am not mentioning the y axis and the x axis because they are very obvious. So, in this case, you will be taking the returns and here you are basically finding or plotting the PDF of that. And uh, the value based on which the formula based on which will you will consider the different types of, of other risk measures, I am just not uh, from diverting from this code, from this lecture, I am saying that when you consider the value at risk, conditional value at risk, expected regret, so on and so forth, based on that you want to uh, also have the same concept of, of, of idea of trying to basically find out the Greeks depending on left skewed or right skewed you have to be very careful in which direction you are trying to measure the loss. Technically, as you go more towards the left, you face a loss and when you go to the more to the right, right means when I am considering the x axis, but uh, when we when you use the concept of trying to find out the, the values of the different type of, of risk which is there. Remember what is important, are you measuring the negative returns or the positive returns. Now, we can come to the concept of vega. So, the vega is basically consider and on, on all the all this calculation we are considering partial derivative only. So, vega which you consider is basically the rate of change of the so called value with respect to the standard deviation because that is very important and if you remember that I had mentioned both in the case when we are considering the, the stock prices and also in the case when we mentioned about the black scholes model, I did mention and I remember the standard deviation of volatility was the very important factor based on which you are able to uh, do, do, do the calculations and, and a high precision value of the standard deviation will give you good results for the calculations of the vega. And here also again consider, you have considered the partial derivative. So, other things are kept fixed, but if they become uh, related and you want to find out the delta, gamma, vega, obviously it will become difficult because you do not have any, you may not have any actual mathematical form of that particular um, uh, portfolio. So, what is the portfolio equation is the, and based on which you find out the, the returns and the rate of, of the portfolio returns based on the spot and the standard deviation. So, the this graph which you have for the vega and what I have done for the other uh, um, this gamma one this one, they look similar, I have I have, I have, I have drawn it uh, using the concept of the explanation in, in John C. L. or the book. So, they look almost the same, but if you remember as you consider different type of positive and negative returns, they would definitely be skewed and they would not look the same. Again, with negative and positive fluctuations of the returns, uh, you will have either a left skewed or the right skewed um, uh, graph when you measure both all the Greeks and here I am discussing about the vega. Now, we are going to come to the, the concept of the um, theta. So, the theta value of a portfolio is the rate of change of the value of the portfolio with respect to the passage of time. First was spot, then was the second derivative of the spot, third was basically the standard deviation and fourth is basically the time. And if you remember all these thing parameters or the variables are very important when you have basically utilized that to find out the um, uh, concept and I try to utilize that concept for the Black Scholes model. The theta of the portfolio is the rate of change or the value of the portfolio with respect to the passage of time, with all the other obviously remains constant. So, this is also called the time decay of the portfolio, like we know in radioactive concepts, this is the decay of the radioactivity 
uh, element. So, half life and all this concept, we, you must have studied in simple uh, physics. So, this is called the time decay of the, of the port flow. Theta is usually the negative of an option because as the time to maturity decreases with all the other things remaining things the same, the option will generally tend to have less value. And, 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 if you, and if you remember, we are trying to basically find out um, though the option pricing graph was not discussed, if you, if you remember the forward price and the spot price was considered and how they look like either the forward price is decreasing and going to the spot or the forward price is increasing and going to the spot. So, based on that when, when somebody wants to find out the, the value of for the options, then people will tend to hold and try to utilize and exercise the option at the last minute because any exercise before may not give the actual benefit or accrue the actual benefit for the person who has bought that option. So, the row which is the other, um, um, so let us not confuse this row with the value of um, row which we generally utilize in, in uh, statistics and this row has been considered um, in other discussions also in, in this course and it will be considered later on with other symbols. So, rho of the portfolio is the rate of change or the value of the portfolio with respect to the level of interest rate. So, so this is basically the portfolio is the rate of change and the value of the portfolio with respect to the level of interest rate which is R basically. I did not highlight uh, the the main concepts for each and every slide for the uh, all the Greeks. So, if we have a currency option, then we have two interest rates. One would basically when when you are trading and if you remember uh, for the swaps, I did discuss that there was a um, concept where you want to basically change your uh, floating to a fixed, fixed to a floating for a currency one. And also if you remember the concept of the hedge ratio. So, hedge ratio would be another important concept which we which we consider that we are we are um, and, and hedge ratio even though it was mentioned that it is more to do with only one interest rates, but uh, the hedge ratio can be there if I am basically operating on two different countries for, for uh, two different currencies based on their underlying derivative which is there. So, if you have a currency option, then we have two interest rates, one for is for basically for the domestic country and then one other is basically for the foreign country. So, uh, as and considering um, uh, the, uh, this is so called uh, the fag end of the discussion for this 30th lecture. So, generally we would have for if we consider the um, Taylor series expan expansion. Now, why this Taylor series expansion is being utilized? Because if you uh, remember in the 29th lecture, when we are discussing about the functional form of G based on which we found out how the option pricing could be done, we consider there are two important variables x which are basically s and one was t and we found out the expansion of the Taylor series expansion to a certain term and I did mention in the beginning of this 30th lecture that for time we can ignore those terms because time was very small as we took infinite difference in the time. Now, why this uh, concept of this Taylor series expansion is, is required is that we need to now find out actually the change of the portfolio. Now, the change of the portfolio would be affected by all of these. What are these? The spot, it will be the standard deviation, it will be the time and it will be the interest rate. Now, when we are considering the spot, we had the, we had the first derivative and the second derivative. If we consider say for example, the standard deviation, we had another Greek. In the third, fourth case, if we when you consider say for example, the time and in the final case, the interest rate. Now, if you plug in in those values for in the Taylor series expansion and we are taking the partial derivative. So, the first term of the general Taylor series expansion 
it is only the first derivative. The first derivative now would be coming from the fact from the spot which is del p, let me use the p word for the portfolio del p by del s, another would be del p by del um, of, of the standard deviation or sigma, then they would be del p by del t and they would be del p by del r. So, they would constitute the first set of terms when the first derivative is there. When we go into the, the, the other higher terms, I am going to mark it here, few of the terms I am going to mark it here. When we go to the higher terms, you need to find out del 2 p del and the, the second derivative again with respect to spot, again with respect second derivative. Now, with second, second one for the, uh, the other discussions would be with respect to the time, with, with respect to the standard deviation and with respect to the interest rate. But now it will also happen that in the higher terms, you have to take as an example del p, I am writing del p with respect del to p, sorry, we are taking the second derivative, it will be del s by say for example, del t time. It can be second values can be other terms would be del say for example, del s by del r. So, these terms would be coming in the, in the set of, of second derivative values. So, if I pay attention here, the change of the portfolio now has basically terms is basically which is the first Greek. So, I will re remove this coloring part, so I do not want to make it too cluttered. So, the first terms are, so first Greek was there with respect to spot, second with respect to time, third Greek, oh, sorry different color, my mistake, with respect to standard deviation. And obviously, there can be the, the interest rate also. Now, these highlighted are the rate of change at that point which you have. Now, you want to find out what is the total quantum. So, the total quantum would be for each and every case would be multiplied by the, the change in first case with s because I have found out the rate of change with, with respect to delta s. So, I need to basically multiply with the small quantum of change of s which we have. So, I will now mark it with the pen with the same corresponding color. So, this is for the spot. If I take the infinite time, this is the second Greek multiplied by the time. So, this is red color and this is a dark red color. The third one would be with respect to the standard deviation. When I go to the higher terms, obviously this term which, which I am not going to highlight it, rather not make it too cluttered. This half value which you have is basically the expansion when you take the Taylor series expansion. So, you have second derivative with respect to the spot, you can have second derivative with respect to the time, but we can ignore it. Uh, we know that because time being very small, we can be ignored. We can have the second derivative with respect to the standard deviation. And there are other terms also, which I will and you will basically mark it with respect to uh, this coloring scheme being, this is delta square, this is delta t square, this is delta sigma square. So, if there are three terms, you will take correspondingly partial derivative with each other. Uh, first with respect to s, then t, s, sigma, t, sigma. So, these are the values. 
So, let, let me continue try to utilize as much as different colors which are there. So, this is second derivative with respect to spot and the time multiplied by del s del t. Then we have let me check whether the color would be done here. Hopefully, you can see it. So, this is now spot and the standard deviation. multiplied by del s del, del sigma. Similarly, as I mentioned the second derivative with respect to standard deviation and, and time. So, do I have any color left? Let me check. Let me use the red has been used 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, I will use the light blue one again. So, this would be this is the same dark blue one uh, sigma and delta t. <coughs> and you can go on third hours and all these things are not giving. Now, why it is important? Um, it is important because we have changes in the portfolio, but what is most important is that are we able to, we will ask the question to ourselves, are we able to take the expected value of the change in the portfolio such that we can understand that on an average how the overall portfolio value will change. So, knowing the terms gives, gives us the value of the expected value and also it will give us the variance and this variance which is important for us to consider is one of the most important values of, of risk. Obviously, other terms have been mentioning it will give us a if calculations are possible it will give a good value of the uh, risk value of the total portfolio. Uh, I do understand that uh, the last um, uh, two sets or three sets of lecture uh, have been a little bit heavy on the content uh, considering that we have only discussed the theoretical part. Uh, but considering the overall coverage, we had an idea to coverage many of the concepts. So, I have tried my level best to highlight the concepts as simple as possible. In this course, if you remember, we have basically uh, tried to uh, cover this whole area of what is the general concept of uh, uh, the portfolio, the concept of efficient frontier mean value uh, theorem, the minimum variance point, the different concepts of, of trading strategies, concepts of utility theory, the concepts of different type of um, derivatives, options, forward swaps, different type of interest rate calculations um, and, and in general for uh, any uh, particular co course in any of these MBA schools in the master program. Generally, uh, it, it would be cover about, about 40 hours of lectures. Um, it can be broken down into two, two sub part courses also, but we have tried our level best to cover the concepts in, in 30 hours. And uh, if any case, if, if you have any doubts, any confusion, if you think the overall coverage has should have been better. We would definitely, at least my I personally would definitely appreciate that if you can write to me, my email ID would be there in the and my home page and definitely uh, a positive um, uh, feedback. In the sense, positive means feedback in the sense that how to improve it. And obviously, if, if things have been done nicely, it will be de definitely appreciated that uh, I get um, the, the the feedback, so that means we can maintain this this flavor of the course. Uh, thank you for all the attention, and um, again I am saying um, any any feedback would be really appreciated for this course. Have a nice day, and thank you all of all all the people who have been associated with this recording and all these things. Stay well and do well. Thank you.